Welcome to your latest headlines from Cardiff News Plus. I'm Sam Limbu. Hundreds of people joined the anti-racism march in Cardiff at weekend to unite against a rise in racism. Politicians and people who were prosecuted by racial discriminations also gave speeches in front of the city hall. Our reporter El Samar joined the march. The march was held on the UN Anti-Racism Day after the Brexit vote and the election of the American President Donald Trump. The organizers say that this annual event is particularly important since it aims to show support for refugees and immigrants. That if you are uh, a minority, if you are in a situation of where you're being blamed within, within your own societies for, for the problems of that society, realize that it's not your fault. We're here to stand with you. If we all get up and kind of like send that message out across the world, then there's nothing they can say that would actually overturn that. And so this is to give confidence to those people who are feeling really kind of like isolated and alone at this moment in time to say, look, you don't have to be, you are not, and we're here and we're hopefully supporting you as well. Racist or religious abuse incidents recorded by police in England and Wales jumped 40% in the month after the Brexit. Saha El Fafi, a Muslim health worker, believes that the racists have become more fearless. She even altered her workload to work every day because of the risk of Islamophobic attack. I have been target uh, for so many um, Islamophobic and racist abuses, from verbal to even physical abuses, in the street, in the city center, and even in the hospitals uh, where I work. It saddened me a lot because a lot of people are not seeing me as a human being. They see me as a terrorist, they see me as a bomber, they don't see me as uh, someone who's contributing to the society. Some of those on the march believe it is important to show the next generation the way to a more fair and tolerant society. I went through marches when I was a child at, to the ANL, the Anti-Nazi League, similar to marches. And I think morally it set me in a good stead for the future. And I, I want to sing for my daughter, or try and teach her from young what's right and what's wrong. The organizer Stand Up to Racism Wells believes that there has never been a more important time in recent history to stand up against racism for everyone's sake. Britain is home to thousands of European and international students, but with the Brexit processes begin to set to begin soon, what is the future for these students? Ruchira Kondipuri reports. Omani students are among the many international student communities in the UK. They recently held an event in Cardiff for Omanis graduating this year. They said Brexit would have little impact on the flow of international students. I think it's good for the international students and in my like in the Oman, UAE because the pound is going down and the fees are going lower as well. The Omani ambassador to the UK was at the event. He said Britain's status in the EU would not hurt international students. The United Kingdom has a tradition of hosting students in this country. I believe millions of students across the world are studying here and they are great ambassador for the UK global uh, cooperation. There is a chance that EU students will have to pay the same fees as non-EU students after Brexit. Will the uncertainty make European students think twice before choosing British universities in future? Um, I do think more European students or more European students will choose to go to other countries such as the Netherlands or Germany than the UK. I do think we'll see a decrease. Because of the fees that they're going to pay, maybe um, there will be uh, a lot of money and maybe a lot of students uh, will stay in their countries instead of coming here. Recent figures show there's already been a 5% decline in EU applicants to British universities. 
Some EU students have raised concerns about their fee status. Our students from Europe, there were some concerns about their fee status and there are some confirmation for this year and next year that the, the students joining or studying in the UK uh, from Europe would be treated as, as home students as normal and we're yet to see the, the, the outcome of the negotiations between our government and the European Union with regards to the Brexit and its effect on the research funding and the Erasmus funding and the students' uh, uh, status. The Brexit process will be triggered next Wednesday. It will be two years before international and EU students receive clarity about their future in the UK. Having a big wedding ceremony can be your childhood dream, but have you considered how much will it actually cost you to organize it? An event called the Big Welsh Wedding Show was held last Sunday in Cardiff for people who are thinking about having a wedding. A reporter, Hyle Adam, went out there to find out more. Marriage can be a very special way of commitment for many women and men. But what is more important for some people is having an unforgettable wedding day. Although the average cost of organizing a celebration in Wales is £30,000, many people might spend that amount of money on a dream wedding rather than a house. A wedding dress, catering, a beautiful hair and a wedding cake are some of the details that make a perfect day. But you shouldn't forget to entertain your guests too. Depending on the kind of act you hire, uh, if you were to hire a DJ, it would cost about £400. If you were to hire a band for the evening, it would cost anything between £900 right up to maybe £2,000. The same thing happens a lot in weddings, so people are always looking for the next thing that will set their wedding apart. I think that's why people are prepared to spend so much money on weddings. The next step after getting married is usually buying a house. The average house price in Wales is £150,000, so it's worth considering if you want to spend your savings on a house or a wedding. It's obviously about love, but it's about commitment, so however even when we are together, there's no ring or whatever, we're committed to each other, but in the eyes of the law, not the law, the law, um, it's not, so you're not, you know, you still put single down on your marital status. And I think, no, I'm not single, I'm with somebody and I, should, and I want to tell everybody about that. Personally, um, nobody in my family has ever been married, so I'm going to be the first. Uh, so it's a big step for me and the family and everything. Um, but no, I'd prefer a house. But <laughs> <laughs> Although the general view is that women are more interested in having a big wedding, it's not always the case. I think it's very to your own thing. Personally, I can't justify spending lots of money because it's, it's not really me. I'd rather have like a fun, relaxed day, a big party is more my priority. But then if people want to spend lots on their wedding, it is only one day, so. For many people, their wedding day is a once in a lifetime experience. But exactly for that reason, it may not be the best investment. This dress you see behind me is actually 1,700 pounds. And don't forget that you'll only get to wear it one day in your lifetime. And this is one of the many expenses you have to consider before planning a wedding. So whether you want to spend your life savings into a wedding or a house is completely up to you. Are you in love with the past? Do you want to get back to the golden era by wearing vintage clothing and maybe driving some rock and roll music? This is what Lulu Vintage Fair is all about. It was held in Cardiff over the weekend. Our reporter Amira Foud went, to, went along to see if there's any bargains from bygone era. Nearly 500 people flocked to this event in Cardiff City Hall. More than 40 stools displayed retro clothing, homeware, jewelry and collectibles from the 20s until the 90s of the last century. Some vintage retailers have been inspired from childhood to start their own business of collecting old stuff. I like searching, I like searching for the vintage items, looking for something unusual. So half my stall is vintage items, the other half is uh, handmade, vintage style jewellery and accessories, etc. So I spend a lot of time making things, but the most favourite thing is actually looking for the genuine vintage items. 
while others are actually quite fond of selling all kinds of old clothes from furs and knitted sweaters to the jeans of the 90s. Well, I think it's a really good thing to get into uh, as far as you know, recycling and upcycling clothing. I really like the sustainable element behind it. Most visitors in the fair have already their wardrobes filled with old clothes. James loves dressing up in his vintage ones. I think they just have more style than more modern day clothes, especially menswear, which is it's quite difficult to come across menswear that is quite unique. A lot of it nowadays is very samey. You look at places like H&M and Debenhams and all that sort of stuff, it's quite generic clothing, whereas here you're often going to find something that stands out a little bit more and catches people's eye. For many people at the event, there is still a lot of nostalgia for the past. I think people are fascinated with the war and it's such an iconic era. And when you look at the hairstyles from the era as well, women started going to work and their hair was still pristine every day when they went out. I like all the music. We've been sat over there with the cup of tea singing along as well. I like the jewellery and and um and I like you had a bow for your hair, didn't you? Yeah. It seems that no matter how young or old you are, or whether you really lived in the golden age or not, we all have the feeling that the past was just more beautiful. Hundreds of children and their parents participated in brain games which returned to Cardiff's National Museum over the weekend. Our reporter Clara Shu went along to exercise her mind. Brain games were designed by Cardiff University and allow people to find out more about how their brains work. We want to get children to understand a little bit more about their brain. So this is uh, Brain Awareness Week this week, National Brain Awareness Week. And next week is National STEM Week, so National Science, Technology, Engineering and Maths. And really what we're trying to do is get kids to understand a little bit more about their brain and really engage with science as a subject in general. Children play games which were designed to stimulate their young minds. They were able to learn how to use the power of their brain to move a ball. They also learned how their brain can be tricked with what it sees and tests. Primary school children found the event a lot of fun and learned a lot. I think it's good because on, on like uh, the Xbox, if you just sit down all day and and um, you get like and you get like bad backs and stuff. But here you you play games while well you play you learn while having fun. I think it's better because in school you just learn like some of the, like spellings, you learn like quite easy things, but here you learn like new things which you've never learned before at all. So I think this is better. Even toddlers discovered how the brain looks and works through simple games. See, she was like colouring, so that's she's learning to develop like fine motor skills. So that's helping the brain to develop in a way. And she's, although she might not be learning in the sense of like learning the parts of the brain, she's still learning to do different things. So it's helping her in maybe a different way to an older child would be learning. The university continues to lead the world in this important research. And these events may inspire the next generation of neurologists and psychiatrists. That's all from Cardiff News Plus for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back next week.